This is your girl Luck. And if you're not keeping it real, you're not keeping it a buck. Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Only Way Out presents Keeping It a Buck with Luck. I'm tired of introducing myself. Y'all know me. I'm lucky. And today I'm sitting with the lovely songstress. Alexis Ray, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good. She I'm she good. she's bringing the sexy vibe. She's like, I'm good. I'm good. Got the <laughs> got the girl sitting up. She said she got to make sure they looking right on mm-hmm. camera. Mm-hmm. So selling a little bit of selling a little bit of sex, a little bit of sexiness. So how you feeling today? You said you feeling good. Yeah. Um, you, you're not nervous. You you chilling. I, I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous. Um, this is like my third interview, so okay. I'm like getting a little bit comfortable with it. You know, okay. I'm a little used to the mix, but I'm I'm glad to be sitting here with you. I'm I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Really? Yeah, because you're keeping it a buck. So yeah, well, I mean, I'm gonna I'm keep it. I'm gonna <laughs> keep it a buck. I'm gonna keep it a buck. We're gonna we're gonna start out soft. We're gonna start out smooth first, and just ask you a little bit about yourself. So, how long have you been singing? All right, so uh, I've been singing my whole life, really. Um, music has really carried me through a lot of, you know, difficult times in my life, carried me through a lot of times of, you know, adversity. So it's always been a part of me. But I've been really recording my music, putting out music officially since 2020 when okay. I dropped Remember When. Okay, okay. And we're going to listen to Remember When because that's, that's on our playlist today. So, okay, that's... So that was, you did that, remember when you did that in 2020? Yeah. So so basically I'll get to hear the your growth. Yeah. I'll get to hear your <laughs> growth today. Okay. So what inspired you, besides hard times, what inspired you or influenced you to become an artist? Um, it was really just always like a, a feeling that I had in myself. It's kind of like I was going through life just like I had a, a song in me. Like I had something in me that I wanted to show everyone, that I wanted to make everyone experience. So that really just pushed me to pursue it and, and really make something out of it. Okay. Did anybody ever go to you, girl, you could sing like, or like, who was the first person that you remember saying, oh my God, like, I love your voice. Uh, my grandmother your grandma um, she used to encourage me to sing too like she would play martina mcbride and like all kinds of because i grew up listening to country like okay oddly oh, wow. enough okay. that i sang r&b but um yeah so she would play all kinds of music and just let me sing my heart out and well she's like come here baby did she have you singing <laughs> for the people come, i mean <laughs> come sing for you come sing for your aunties um I, I mean, I sing for my family, too. I would always sing for my cousin. It okay. definitely did start at home first. Okay. Okay. And then do you write your music? Do you write your songs? Yeah, I do. I write all my music. So what's your what's your process? All right. So I get, <laughs> <laughs> I get like, an old-school recorder, like a tape recorder. And whenever I catch a vibe with an instrumental, I'll, like, throw on the instrumental. And then I'll just go with it, like record if I have lyrics or if I have like a little <laughs> like whatever, I just throw it on there and then I'll go back and listen to it. And then the song will like come into play. So it's a process. Like some of them take longer. Okay. Some of them just right away. Now, are your songs that you write, are they typically personal to you? Um, so far, like, yeah, it's been something that I personally have been through experience. But like I... I also do poetry and stuff and I write. So I'm able to like draw inspiration from people that I might meet, stories that I might hear. Uh, But yeah, right now it's, it's really personal. Okay. What would you say is the most personal song that you've ever written or sung? Mm, Dynamite. Mm, Okay. What's dynamite about? Uh, Dynamite is basically about being really, you know, really independent. You get it on your own and, when you're getting it on your own like that, there's a sense of loneliness. Like mm. people aren't always there for you the way that you would be there for them. Or like, it's just that, that emotion of, you know, I'm here, I'm doing it by myself and I'm kind of alone. And like, I kind of miss the people that I used to have. I miss the connection I used to have, but you have to like cut certain people out of your life because it's just, you know, they're calling you, you miss them, but it's just not good for you anymore. Like, yeah, that one definitely was really personal. <laughs> like, do you do you think that, like, why do you think or what do you think contributes to you realizing that certain relationships are no longer good for you or serve you? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, typically, it's when you just realize that they're not reciprocating your energy anymore. They're not 
you know, giving to you what you're willing to give to them. They're not being there for you on the front that they acted like they would in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, And then some people you just realize uh, you're like you outgrow them a little bit, like not in a bad way. But sometimes in life you meet people, you grow and and they stay in one spot. So it's kind of like sometimes you grow in in different directions. That too. Yeah. This person's going this way and you're like, it's not really where I see my life going. So mm-hmm. I could t- I could totally I could totally understand that. And have you ever considered like writing for others or have you written for others? So at first I was like, no, there's no way. Like everything I make is mine. I'm going <laughs> to sing it like it's meant for me. But then, you know, as I'm getting more in tune with the industry, how it works and how a lot of people end up coming up, it's like, OK, you know what? I, I might get write for name, somebody. Yeah. I, get I your could... name out there. You uh-huh. make money yeah. writing. And it's, I, I don't want to say it's less work because I don't want, because I don't know, but I would assume like mm-hmm. if you just give somebody a reference track and you profit off of that. Mm-hmm. Then they, you know, do all the marketing yeah. and all that. So don't you, be stingy you know. with your babies. Like right, give, right. Some of that, give some <laughs> of that music and some of that, that pain or whatever the things that you've been through, give it away. Mm. I say give it away. Like, and, well, you're not giving it away. You'll make money off of it. Right. So yeah. So profit off of your talent. Yeah. There's different ways to do it. Yeah. The- yeah, for sure. So we are going to listen to uh, Remember When. That's going to be the first track that we listen to. So do you want to give a little backstory on it before we listen to it? Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, Remember When, my first single, the first uh, musical you know, outbreak that I made, the debut, that's about uh, basically you you find someone, everything's a vibe at first, and, like, you fall in love with them, and then it's not working out, and then you just, you can't forget about them, so you're just remembering, I'm reminiscing. Okay, okay, so let's get into it, remember when, let me see, it's gonna be my first time, I'm gonna look at the video too, see what we got going on here. That was remember when, like, pr- production wise, production wise, like, that was definitely a bop. 
like your voice is super unique so i'm like stuck in between like do i love your voice or do i not love your voice like it because it's it's really unique it's different so i feel like when i when i hear you saying i i i'm not going to confuse you with anybody like i definitely felt the vibe of the song it had good energy the song definitely had good energy it's like it's like a feel good like you know like kind of that's how I felt like listening to it. Like it felt good. But like what I would ask you is like, who is your inspiration? Like, where do you draw inspiration? Like as an artist, where does your, you, is that how you're like, that's naturally how you sound. It's like really jazzy. It's like, that's the vibe that I had like hearing your voice. Hmm. So you don't have a bad voice. It's just like super unique. So I'm like, Hmm, it's different. Good. I'm glad you said that because that's the goal. I don't want to sound like anyone else. Okay. I, exactly what you said. I don't know, you know, how is it? Well, not how you feel about it, but if I hear it, I know it's you. Yeah. I can't get you mistaken with anyone else. Mission complete. Yeah. I'm that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I don't want to sound like anyone else. Um, Definitely. I have a lot of inspirations. Like I listen to country going up. Like I listen to rock music. I listen to some R&B. Like I listen to everything. So I kind of just seeing how it comes out of okay me. <laughs> who's your two sense. two favorite artists right now Ooh, two favorite artists right now west side gun and larry june <laughs> automatic <laughs> west automatic side yeah automatic like okay okay <laughs> 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 what am i gonna say but no i really like and i like what you said because your goal is to be unique mm -hmm. and i like that because there are so many artists that you listen to now and I'm like, is that, no, it's not. Like you can't differentiate sometimes who is who. So I definitely appreciate the uniqueness. Like I can't, I can not knock you on being unique. So let's talk about image though. I do want to talk about image because we had a little like discussion beforehand about like camera angle where the, and I'm, I'm big on like, I don't want to show my fupa. I don't want to show my stomach. Like I have an issue with that. That's something that I am trying to work out mm -hmm. and work on. But, um, I, and you were like, kind of like the same, like in that manner, like where's the camera going to be situated? Mm -hmm. So, and I did see an IG post where you had said, um, I don't know if it was one of those point of view ones, but you basically said people say to you that you don't fit the image that is supposed to be portrayed like for an artist and basically mm -hmm. like about your weight, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, like, number one, is that something that really happens to you? And how do you feel about it? Yeah. So, uh, it does happen. I had a couple producers, um, tell me that, you know, they would manage me if I was skinnier or like, basically like my image isn't there to be marketable because like, I'm a little thick. You feel me? I, I feel like I like the way that I look, you know, I got, I got some body on me. I like it. But because of that, um, knockback that I've gotten from, you know, people who are in the industry and making moves, it was kind of like, well, damn, now now I'm on camera and it's like, you know, they're looking at every little thing that's on my body to see mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm markable. Am I am I sellable? Like literally, I'm just an object. I don't have any music or creativity to actually give you. Um, but yeah, it does happen. Uh, and because you're a pretty girl, like so, or I shouldn't call you a girl, <laughs> I've woman. Heard that. You're a pretty woman. So I don't see like me personally. I feel like if you're talented, you're talented. I do understand that sex sells, certain things sell, but mm -hmm. I do also. On the other hand, you have people like Lizzo. You have people mm -hmm. who are like because you're not in the Lizzo category of bigger girl. Like I think that you're just thick. Like I don't look at you and go like no it's uh, no like so i don't i don't 100 percent get like where do they want you to lose weight uh i guess like just my my body isn't slim enough i've literally had people tell me like you have a good face but all you can give me is chubby girl face shots like i've had people talk to me that way so this this is how maybe i'm talking to the wrong people <laughs> but Oh. <laughs> like you know what I mean so yeah but I've, I've heard that and it's just uh, 
they feel like well some people feel like my body isn't marketable enough because it's not uh, tightened up in the right places I, I got a little belly whatever whatever but like overall yeah it has affected um how I, how I want to appear on camera, like, you know, making sure I look good. Plus, I mean, you always want to make sure you look good anyway. Right. But, like, um, yeah, it happens. What and do you think image-wise is, like, the biggest thing that you have to work on? Um, for me, I think it's just uh, com- comfortability. Because, okay. like, I, I have confidence. I'm going for it like that. Um, sometimes I just feel a little bit uncomfortable because I'm placed in, in new situations, like different situations. And it's like, um, if you're comfortable, that's going to show on camera. So okay. if you can master the art of like being comfortable wherever you are, then that's going to come through. And then maybe those people that think that I don't look good enough are going to be like, well, you know what? She got that. She got a spark. Okay. She just goes for it. So yeah. your confidence level scale one to 10, what would you say? Um, I mean, it depends on the day. Some days I, it, it's true. No, I get it. I Some get days it. I, I feel it. better than other days. Right now, I'm have to say I'm sitting at like you know, this a uh, eight, eight. Good eight, a good eight. Yeah, All right. I'm feeling good today. I, I'm not <laughs> mad at that. I just feel like you have to be comfortable with who you are, where you are, how you look in life, and if you don't like something about yourself change it on your terms, mm. not someone else's terms. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Like. I, a thousand people could tell me like, oh, you you don't look great, but it has to be when I want to do it. So for you, I would say if that's something you want to do, you do it. If you want to lose weight, do it on your terms. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. But anyways, let's get into your last track. That's never sassy. So that's your newest track, yeah. right? So, okay. So how, when, how recent is never sassy? Um, so this is new, new. Yeah. It, it dropped on July... I forget exactly what day. It's like a three three weeks, I think. Okay. Since it dropped. All right. So this is so now we're gonna be able to see like if there was some maturation in like lyrically or lyrically. <laughs> I'm so used to talking to rappers. Like um, vocally mm-hmm. and your and your writing skills. We'll see like you know your maturity. So let's get into never sassy. Make sure you hit me when you touch down in my city. You and this this sexy se- sexy voice thing. <laughs> You know I got what you're looking for You know how to set the tone You know how to keep it classy We get home, you get nasty Cause with you I'm never sassy You know how to wine and dine Keep this us satisfied Fucking slow and broken flights Met him on a Friday night In Sarasota, all black Everything moved from California Ends with the rims Said his name was Is That I look like a sweet ho Who's not really a sweet I said my name's Alexis But you can call me Lexi You looking hella sexy Lock me in and text me As soon as I walked away He couldn't wait He took me on a date Spent a thousand on a plate Hotel, the hotel Everything is stunning We fight a little bit Cause the makeup sex is lovely the way he grabs my hips, you couldn't say he doesn't love it Hit him with the grip, he's double knotting like it's nothing Messing up the sheets, all the pillows on the floor Have you ever begged for more on the balcony and floor? Bought some red bottom just so I could wear them naked Told him fuck me on the couch like we're trying to make a baby Moving from the stairs to the table to the sink When I asked him whose it is, he didn't even have to think You know how to set the tone, you know Keep it classy, we get home, you get nasty Cause with you I'm never sassy yeah. confidence in your music like you feel your music you're like man i don't care what nobody talking about (laughs) um i you was getting like real sexy talking about a lot of things (laughs) in that song um so never sassy like i thought it was going to be about something else i thought i didn't I, i when i read a title i'm like oh okay i try to just make up 
what I think is going to be about. So I thought you was going to be talking some, like, ish about something else. Like, I don't know. I thought something totally different. But you're more still talking about a relationship. Maybe it was a relationship. Not really sure. Because, like, you said something about he spent a thousand on a date. What'd you say? Do you remember what you Took said? Took me on a date, spent a thousand on our plate. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Because there's just trend going around right now. <laughs> you, I don't know if you've seen it. Where girls are getting flued out, right? Girls are getting flued out. Mm-hmm. Guys are spending all this money. But the girls don't want to have sex. I, I haven't seen the trend, but like. Yeah, it's a trend. Mm-hmm. So if a dude flies you out, he flies you out. Mm-hmm. And you get there. He done spent all his money, got you hotel, does all these things. Mm-hmm. Do you think, what do you think he is flying you out for? Uh, automatically, if a dude is flying you out and he's spending money on you, he thinks you better spend some pussy, okay? Okay. That's like, what they think. Thank you. That is what they think. That's the truth. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, why people think somebody's flying you somewhere <laughs> and then they're getting upset when the guy's like no we all know what they want you went uh that's a iffy game for you i mean is that your man is that about to be your man are you playing are you playing games i don't know that's- like and see and then the girl <laughs> that, like was like she put up a video some girl i don't know who she was and was like she basically had to fly well she had to get back home because he was like oh okay you're not giving like she's like i don't have no money so like why would you go somewhere without? I mean, if, uh, first of all, like, I wouldn't just let anybody fly me out. Like, either, you know, we're about to be a thing. Like, you're about to be my man. We're testing the waters. Like, okay, first of all, that's the basis that we're going to be on. So it's not like I'm automatically going out there to give you anything. Like, you're showing me what you have to offer me, and I'm going to see if I like it or not. But, like, if I know that that's not the basis as it is, he's just flying me out to do whatever, then he just, he, you know Yeah, what you got to have a con- You have to have a conversation. You have to have that conversation know why you're going out there you have to have a conversation <laughs> or you can't be mad you set yourself up like <laughs> you set yourself up for that so back into the song never never sassy right mm-hmm. to me i don't know if this is what you were talking about so you could correct me if i'm wrong but it was like about like basically being submissive in a sense mm-hmm. yeah to the right guy yeah. okay oh to the right guy to the right one you okay know? but okay. you had to earn it first okay so what are your feelings about being submissive in a relationship Um, so I think that being submissive in a relationship is basically like, that's really up for the relationship dynamics for both of you. So like, um, there is a sense of when you are, (laughs) okay, let me, let me think about how to word this because I know what I'm trying to say, but like, so let's go back to the old school basis of a relationship and having a provider and then having, you know, the woman stay at home. Do I think it should be that way? No. But in the right circumstance, when you're with a man who is, you know, um, he is, I want to say like, what taking care of his, right. He's taking taking care. care, He's taking care of his woman. He's taking care of his home. There's nothing wrong with like, you know, not giving him him an attitude, not trying to be like, Oh, I'm all like this. I can do it on my own all the time. Blah, blah. Like, no, if he's there taking care of you, trying to take care of the house, take care of the family, blah, blah. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to be sassy with you. Like, okay. So what is it? Okay. So that's what, that's what it's about to you. Like, mm -hmm. cause I was going to ask you, what does submission look like? Um, yeah, so I mean, submission like yes or no, sir. Like what is no, no, but it, it also goes both ways. So it's like, is he respecting you? Is he taking care of you? Is he actually, you know, I so, guess I guess it goes both ways. It's, you a, know? it's a given. It, it's is a, that really submission in respect? Mm. I'm very I'm very literal. <laughs> I'm very literal. Because no, when, I look, when um, I look at submission, I'm like. No, somebody's losing. It's not like a yes sir, no sir kind of scenario, but it's like, you know, it's a respect and it's a, it is some give and take. So like if he's respecting me, right, he's taking care of me, he's doing all of that, why, why am I going to give him a hard time about everything and always have an attitude? Okay. No, I could, I could, I could dig but it. But if he's not, and he's he's not playing his role, so and he's not doing what he's sassy. supposed to do, yeah, then that's I'm when you're gonna, that's right, when you're gonna get right. sassy. Have not, you ever been submissive in a relationship? No, not yet. No, no one has been able to make me go to that level because they're not they're not um, providing <laughs> what I require. Like, <laughs> okay, it no, would I... take a lot. It would take a lot if that ever happened. What does it take? What does it take? Uh, <laughs> Maybe they need some pointers. I mean, I'm I'm still learning. Like, I'm still learning that on my own too. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I won't put up with. There's a lot of stuff that I don't like uh, that I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to bend okay. to be with you 
So, like, I'm still learning what that takes, what, too. What's, but what's the two biggest deal breakers? Mm, if he's got no respect, like, at all, like, he just doesn't have any respect. Um, respect for you? Respect, respect for, for me or just in general. Like, you're not, you're not a respectful person. Like, you don't okay. carry any class about you. You don't um, have any basis of, like, morals or like that. Okay. Um, second biggest deal breaker. This is going to sound really, really dumb, but if he if he really can't, like, um, articulate, he can't communicate at all, like, he can't spell, he can't articulate, like, I don't know. Did you, did you find somebody? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, they don't know the difference I shouldn't between... Be, I shouldn't be laughing, out, laughing at that, because there are people who struggle. No, it's true, like, yeah, but I don't know. I need someone who's well-written, well-spoken, and knows how to have morals and a basis of carrying themselves. Okay. No, that's fine. Cause it's big for me to have someone who communicates like I'm big on that. Like, and I like to have certain like conversations. So if the conversation is not going anywhere with like, if we're just talking about the same stupid stuff over right, and over, he's got to like, have goals. He has to have goals and ambitions. So if he has no goals, no ambitions then you know, okay. I feel working. you. I feel you. So what is, what is next for you? Like, is there an EP coming? Like what, what are we working on? What are we doing? Uh, yeah. So I am working on an EP right now. Um, I have a got couple a title? songs on there. Yeah, it's actually called Esoteric. Okay, why is Esoteric? What's going on here? Um, because basically it's like meant to be understood by few. So the EP is really going to be an introduction to why I do what I do. It's going to mm. tell the backstories of like things that I've been through that brought me to the path of wanting to do music. And then it's okay. going to be like an introduction to my album. I got an album planned out too. But, you know, I'm taking it step by step. But okay. it's basically going to be an introduction to me as an artist, why I do what I do, telling the story of how I came into this, and then getting them ready for the, the album. album. Yeah. Okay. And when it, when can we expect the EP? Do you have a date yet? No. <laughs> I don't have a date yet. Uh-uh. Before the end of this year? Maybe? Uh, uh, I can't give any promises okay. or guarantees. All right. So I won't, I, won't, I won't push it. I won't push it. But I do want to thank you for sitting here with me, keeping it a buck. You can shout out your social medias, where people can find you, all that good stuff. Yeah, uh, so you can definitely follow me on Instagram at Alexis Ray. It's A-L-L-E-X-Y-S-R-R-A-E. And then you can follow me on Facebook at Alexis Ray Music. And um, subscribe to my YouTube. She got that voice. She just uh, Alexis Ray <laughs> official. <laughs> And y'all already know, make sure y'all like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Also follow us on Instagram at Only Way Out Podcast. And remember, if you're not keeping it real, you're not keeping it a buck. Until next time, and we out of here.